Meet Zhang Xin, China's glamorous self-made billionaire. Here is the story of a nation. From the poverty of Mao's communist rule, she fought her way to become one of the country's top entrepreneurs. Today, her company is synonymous with exclusive, cutting-edge real estate. Her skyscrapers are designed by the world's leading architects. She says this is just the beginning. Zhang Xin is on the London Eye talking with Francine Lacroix about being a businesswoman in China. Talk to me a little bit about what it's like being a businesswoman in China. I've, I've heard you say before that actually China fosters talent, especially in women. Mm. You know, China, people think, people think about China as a place where you know, women suffered because young girls, young babies were given away and being abandoned. But that is also true. Uh, but in the same time, you also see, especially in the private sector, where women are just, you know, given amazing opportunities. Um, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's because what uh, socialist China has done to women is called women can raise half of the skies. Mm -hmm. So as a result, especially in business, in private business, you see a lot of women. Women like me starting a business, you know, women like me with a family, with children and juggling between things. There's just plenty of us. Because there's just more opportunity or because you're maybe more driven because you've never seen the sky as a limit? Well, I think both, you know, because I think culturally it is true that a lot of families still favor boys as a result women are much more driven and so that's one and two is because i think it's just a new vibrant economy that provides a lot of opportunities being men and women everyone's got more opportunities than in a very established environment it is like you know for me a day is like there's some day, some moments in the office having meetings some moments on the construction sites with my heart hit uh, you know some moments working with architects around the world some moments just going to see other cities and see how other urbanization is made it's amazing you would have a great view if we were in Beijing right Isn't now because most amazing? of the I, mean, yeah. I was so amazed when you said this is going to be shot on the London Eye I was like Wow, it couldn't have been a better place. <laughs> and actually, if we were to be in Beijing, a lot of the skyline would be yours. And you've never actually compromised on style, but also on architects. Mm. So you've always put that first instead of profits. Why? It's funny, because when we sell these buildings, right, and you think that you know these buildings are just dollars. Uh, they're finance, they're dollars, they're numbers. Actually, these buildings are part of the city. They form the face of the city. So I was always very aware that uh, you know this, the, the spirit of a building, it's much stronger than numbers. And so from the very beginning, we always thought that you know, it would be great if we can get great architects around the world to do it. Right now, we're working with Zaha Hadid, who is a London-based architect. Yeah. Are you hands-on, but also you know, do you, do you engage or I guess what is your, your best quality? I think, you know, you have to love what you do. You have to be passionate about what you do. And when you have the passion and there's no way you don't notice problems when you go on a construction site, you know, I see a column, I see paint, I see materials, you know, everything is in my eyes, right? So, I mean, I think that's, that's what drives me working you know, every day to go to the office and thinking, because otherwise, you know, after you build 30, 40 towers, you get bored, right? But it's never boring for me because every tower is like a new baby coming up. And I'm thinking about, oh, you know, how it would be like. And from the day we, you know, imagining to actually the day we turn key.